chances are good that if you early extend in your golf swing, you're probably not aware of it unless you've either seen it on video or had somebody point it out to you. And that's because early extension is something that's a little bit difficult to feel. But once you see it, it's very clear of, okay, that's what I'm doing. But then the how do I fix it question still comes into play because many people who are aware that they're early extending have no idea how to fix it. And this is one in particular that if you're dealing with a case of the shanks, this is one we need to take a look at. So what is early extension? Early extension is simply, whether it's on the backswing or on the downswing or both, your body is lunging towards the ball prematurely. It's early, it's early extension. It's not to say that we're not supposed to do that, but it's supposed to happen much later in the swing than it does for many of us. And so by being able to keep our butt back and turn through impact, we're gonna have a much better time making contact as opposed to moving forward and getting stuck having to make the club come over the top and scrunch up through impact. So when we talk about early extension, what we're talking about is this thrusting towards the ball. And we want to understand why this happens. And like most of these swing faults, they're twofold. In the case of early extension, we're looking at one, ankle mobility, and two, we're talking about hip, leg, core stability. So on the one hand, we need to be able to remain strong with the ground, that's where our power comes from, feet and ankles, and then transfer that energy through our body without letting it extend early, which requires hip, leg, and core stability. So let's go ahead and go through one of our protocols of how we're going to make this happen. First thing, with ankle mobility, so we need to get the ankles warm, the calves warm, the feet warm, and so we're going to do heel raises. Once that whole system is warm, then we can start to make some change. And we're going to do that by doing a calf smash. Great way to break up all the tight tissues of the calves that are restricting the ankles from moving the way we want to. And then we're going to do a calf power stretch. And the power stretch is a great way to get the range of motion that we're working on creating to stick and to last. So that's one better connection with the ground, better mobility in the ankles. Now we're not going to go up onto the toes. One of the reasons why golf shoes have a raised heel is to help people not do this, to, to help them avoid it. Because if your ankles are tight, when you swing, you're naturally going to go forward. So how can we stay back as we swing? And the only way to stay back is to have calves and ankles that support this. Because that angle, your foot, your calf, they're going to move. And if they can't move, you're going to move, okay? And the other side of it is the hip, leg, core stability side. Now, again, we need to tackle this in a couple of different ways. The first one is a toe touch sky reach. Great exercise for getting the entire body to flex and to extend. And then we're going to move into a bear dog. Great way to create stability through the core and mobility through our limbs, super important for early extension. And then we're going to do some single leg toe touches. Great way to develop really strong stab stability through the hip leg core kind of pelvic area. And so by the time that we're done going through this protocol of exercises, you're gonna be able to stay on the ground a little bit longer while creating power to take the energy from your legs and put it into the ball without being absorbed by your back and your hips and your shoulders and all those places that tend to ache. Simple as though it may be, heel raises are a great way to warm up your calves before you do some mobility on them. Simple enough, toes are forward, 12 o'clock, I raise my heels, I put them back down. I'm trying to go smooth and under control. I don't want it to be too jerky. 
we're just going to spend time up and down. And that's just about it. It's as simple as that. You're going to feel really good working in the lower part of your legs, and it's a great prep work for doing things on your calves or your ankles. Sometimes our muscles are overworked and underloved, and that's typically the case for our calves. And sometimes we just need to give them a little bit of love, give them a deep massage, and get everything moving the way it's supposed to again. Now there's a lot of ways that we can do this, using everything from mobility tools, to a golf club, to even your own hands. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is massage these tissues. I'll give you a couple quick examples. With your fingers, you can grab, pinch, and roll the skin to get it as deep as you can and really just work it. You'll feel it as you go. Start gentle and work your way in. If you've ever got a massage, you're just doing it to yourself. Okay? With a golf club, you can put the golf club behind your leg, hook on with your thumbs like this onto the shaft, grab your leg with your fingers, and then you can just rock the club back and forth. You can also move your foot around while applying a little bit of pressure all up and down the calf. And then finally, you could get something like a mobility tool where you can put your leg up on to the mobility tool, same thing, forward, backward, side to side, roll your foot around, all with the goal of giving a little bit of love back to your calves. One of my favorite things to do is to give some love back to my calves, especially if I've smashed them out or rolled them out recently. Uh, or after a workout or a, a round of golf, I really love to go through a deep power stretch and really get them feeling good. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our foot into the ground as best we can. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. One is just on the flat ground, trying to get your foot flat, trying to get the, the pressure back, pushing through the heel, straightening the leg, and then just spending some time in this position. The other thing that we can do is we can raise the foot, and this gets a little bit more leverage. So we can get something like a yoga block or uh, the curb at a golf course, uh, the wall. There's a lot of things we can do. And this stick is obviously to hold on for balance, but here, now I don't have to get my leg so far back to achieve the same angle. I'm just putting it up on the block, press my heel into the ground, bring myself forward. Now the key here is one, I'm trying to bring my hips forward. So my knee is locked, I'm bringing my hips forward. That stretches the calf. Two, I don't care what my chest is doing. I might bring it forward for balance, but again, it's about the hip. And then three, we want to make sure that we're pressing the heel down and raising the toes up, okay? And sometimes you need to relax that, but when you can, press the heel down. Three, two, one, raise the toes up. Three, two, one. Breathe the whole time, and you're going to get the most out of this stretch, especially if you've recently smashed your calves. Believe it or not, one of the healthiest things that you can do for your movement hygiene is to bend down and touch your toes every day. And so we're going to do something called the Toe Touch Sky Reach, which is a great exercise for not just touching your toes, but also opening you up. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend as far as we can with your legs straight, reaching down, rounding your back and touching your chin is okay. When you get to that point where you need to bend them, go ahead and bend them, touch the ground, and then we come up and we stand tall. When you get tall, squeeze your butt and lock it in, and then you can reach high and lean back a little bit. And this is going to be a great exercise for, again, touching the ground, bending the, the waist, and then reaching up and backwards. And that's the toe touch sky reach. I can't think of many exercises better suited for building core strength coordination and overall stability and mobility at the same time than the bear dog. And the bear dog combines two of my favorite exercises, the bird dog and the bear plank. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting into a bear position, which is hands and knees. And we're this time going to tuck our toes underneath and raise our knees just barely off the ground. Now we're going to do the bird dog, extending our right arm and left leg out as far as we can. Three, two, one. Slowly back in under control and switching sides, going back and forth as many times as you need to until you feel an improvement in your strength, in your stability, in your balance. Now this exercise is pretty difficult, so if you find that you're falling over, go ahead and keep your knees on the ground 
and do a traditional bird dog. Do about three or four of them and then hold a bare plank for 10 to 30 seconds. And doing them separately from each other will end up building the strength and the mobility you need to do this version. One of the absolute best ways to build strength and control of the lower body as well as coordination and balance is the single leg toe touch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our foot flat on the ground and bring your other leg up flat to the ground. Now we're gonna bend at the waist as low as we can. Now for some of you, this might be enough. Just trying to do this motion might be plenty. But then we work our way down. Can we get to our knee and come all the way back up? Can we get to our shin and come all the way back up? Can you get down to the toes or to the floor and again come back up under control? Spend as much time as you need to working on getting a little bit farther each time before switching sides to balance it out. If you found any of this information helpful, please go to tourshotgolf.com to check out and learn more. And then check me out on the social medias at Facebook. Come into my free Facebook group, the Mobilitas Movers. Or check me out on Instagram or YouTube, both at Tourshotgolf. Move better, play better.